Welcome to Camping with Steve. Got a bicycle all loaded up. We got a back road here and we're going to do some secret camping. It's about the fifth time I've tried to film this video and things haven't worked out so far. But I'll explain more about that once we start the stealth camp and boogie. I checked out a few spots down the road. Uh, they should probably be okay. And it's a little incline. I'm a little out of shape. So we're probably not going too far. Let's, uh, let's get on the road. Gone down the road here for a few miles and a lot more out of shape than I thought. Uh, but this opportunity presents itself nicely. There's a little path here. This is kind of a conservation area, which uh, is not private property, so that's good. But there are signs that say no camping, so you know what we're going to do here. I'm going to get my stealthy little bike into the woods here. Once I'm sure it's clear in both directions, and we'll let the camping commence. We're good. This, uh, this site specifically forbids um, ATVs or off-road motorized vehicles. You can see nobody's really paying attention to that very much. Very good potential here, very good potential. Um, the road is still right there, so I'm gonna hopefully get around a turn here. We should be hidden from view. This looks like a pretty good spot. There is the off-road trail just back there, but anybody coming through on an off-road vehicle, uh, they're breaking the rules anyway, so what be the harm if I'm here in a hammock? Also gonna be, uh, I'm setting up reasonably late tonight. I'm gonna be out very early in the morning, but the very first thing, very first thing needs to be done is to get a thermocell operating to get these mosquitoes under control. even before what's usually step number two. The thermocell, I get questions about this. Um, basically, there's a little pad in here that has the same stuff on mosquito coils, except way more concentrated, and it just runs off of butane. This one's the backpacker model, so you can put it onto the same canisters you're using for a backpacking stove, and that works just fine. I found great success with these. Pick them up at any hardware store. <laughs> They're not sponsoring me, I just... Uh, I don't mind endorsing a good product, especially when it keeps the mosquitoes at bay. Oh, was it broken? No, oh, it's working. Yeah, yeah. Look in, and that kind of shows you if the if the fire is burning inside of there. Anyway, we'll let that clear mosquitoes out of the area, and while that happens, uh, it's five o'clock somewhere. I did the check around for any widow makers or trees that could come down and squish me in the night and it looks like smooth sailing around here so I got these little tree straps I they protect the trees uh, <laughs> I can see the road from here I thought I was in a little further uh, there's not many leaves out yet and those will be nature's camel as soon as uh, as soon as they decide to join the party stealth camping will get a lot easier and uh, found a couple of trees, nicely spaced, and that should do the job. <sighs> Skeeters. Well, I've usually tied the Alberta cluster knot on these, and too many mornings I've had to use a fork to untie the knot. So, what I do now on this little tree saver thing is I, I loop through once, I loop through twice, I just go in from underneath, pull her tight like that. And I haven't fallen down yet with uh, with this knot. Then in the morning, just yank on that and it'll hopefully come apart for me. So, there. I'm not doing a knot. I don't know if this has a name. I'm sure it does. But, yeah. The Steve knot. There we go. I tend to put it up around eye height. And that way, if I have to hang out underneath the overhangs, I can. So, integrated rain fly, very excellent. That little uh, culprit there that slid out of the way, known as a snakeskin for some reason. And uh, yeah, 
Mix set up and tear down a breeze. Okay, uh, yeah, I better tighten that knot. <clears throat> yeah. Some people use carabiners, and there is something to be said for that. Slowly add weight. Ah, there we go. Nobody suspects a thing from the road. You're not gonna see anything. But this is about the fifth time I've tried to film this. Um, uh, the very first time I was in a city park in Edmonton and people were not leaving the park. It was infested with families. And I figured they'd have a bedtime or a movie night, but nine o'clock came, 9.30 came, 10 o'clock, and they're still there just staring at the creek. And there's no leaves on the trees, so it's a pretty obvious location. And I am going to get caught one day, but I'm not just going to hand it to the park rangers on a plate. That would have been too easy for them. They, they got to work for it if they want to catch me. So I said, okay, I can't do that. I packed up and I thought, I'll film the next day. Then our phones go off. There's an emergency alert system here in Canada. It goes... Uh, Neener, neener, and it goes to text to everybody. Uh, it's obnoxious. But it was telling us that there's a humongous bloodthirsty wildfire just about 30 miles from our home, and it was moving quick. So we opted to get back close to home to keep an eye on the situation. If we had to save the beer and the wedding pictures, then we could. Um, we'd at least be in around home. And then there were various uh, rainstorms. Anyways, I finally got out uh, to film this thing, and it'll be the first of many. Um, there's always a variety of spice here, as far as the, the videos go. But uh, this one I've been dying to do for a long time. Between the hammock and the bicycle are my preferred method of choice for stealth camping. Uh, the bags on the back don't look that obvious. There's no bed rolls or sleeping bags. Packs up really good. Uh, as well as the hammock. They set up quick. You can uh, tuck them away real small. And with the bags on the side to the outside observer, they probably think they lost my license or something and I was peddling home some groceries to my long-suffering family. Little do they know, it's full of camping gear and I'm gonna go stealth camping. So the bicycle can get to a lot of places that I wouldn't want to with a backpack because it's simply so far to walk. And I can get to places that a car can't because I couldn't exactly park on the side of the road out there to come in and camp. So it's a perfect intermediate uh, sized vehicle that can carry a good amount of gear. And the hammocks are just brilliant, I love them. Uh, you got a seat, you got a shelter, uh, there's a screen right on it to keep the bugs out. Uh, this is the, the ultimate pairing of, uh, of stealth camping equipment. Uh, trying to break in this bicycle still, <laughs> got it years ago. There's a Brooks saddle on it, which is supposed to be the ultimate once you break them in. And that shows how much I've used it, is that it's still not broken in after uh, four and a half, almost five years, I guess now. So, uh, yeah, beautiful wife got this for uh, a wedding present for me. And, yeah, they said after a couple hundred kilometers, the saddle's broken in. It'll be, like, perfectly custom to uh, the shape of your butt. That didn't happen yet, so... I'm gonna get more use out of this and get myself back into shape. This is what I managed to cram into these uh, saddlebags. I've already taken out the uh, hammock. Got some water, a bunch of food, which is good. Uh, cooking oil for cooking the food, plate gear. I got a pot with me. Uh, fish batter mix. So we're going to be doing fish and chips out here tonight. And uh, it's that time of year I can use smaller sleeping bags. So this little thing. I used this on a camping trip not too long ago where it was getting down to uh, below freezing at night. It was Oh, minus four Celsius or something at least. So we're talking definitely in the 20s Fahrenheit. Um, and despite what this says, 
it's they're never rated like that but it was close and uh, yeah bicycle pump uh, just in case and yeah on the other backpack I got uh, the folding butterfly stove and just mostly filming gear so all of this packed up nicely if I wasn't bringing such elaborate meals I could get a few days uh, with a fully loaded bicycle and probably a life straw for water but this is pretty swampy around here I don't know I think life straws may have their limits when it comes to uh, frog infested sloughs on the main uh, little trail here what can we see we can see everything that's the most obvious thing I've ever seen in my life so let's hope nobody comes down here the blue on the bicycle and the shininess uh, that, that really gives it away but down here if we go a little farther let's see exactly what we can see it's a little better but I think as soon as we get to this cut line here for the natural gas line we should be really invisible Okay, there's the main road. Okay, I think that's uh, that's acceptable. There's still more brush between here and the main back road, but we're gonna get away from there and. Uh, Maybe check out these frogs, see what we can see what we can see. Most people driving down this road are not going to be looking for somebody camping out here. They're just trying to stay between the lines and get home. If you like that noise, you're gonna love this video. All these trails through here, thinking uh, probably moose. There is uh, some piles of number two along this trail. Uh, some of it's fairly fresh. Some of it's a little older and well-beaten trail here, well-beaten trail. And When I come into this area, there's a lot of beaten down grass all over the place. And this could be a day bed area for them when they do their daytime stealth camping of their own. Yeah, there will definitely be some wildlife around here, that I can say. Oh, before it gets too dark, I'm gonna cut up the fries. Because otherwise, I'll be trying to see, there'll be weird looking doorstop fries. And nobody likes that. So, not bad. Um, there's a few weird looking ones in there, that's for sure, but I've cut worse in a kitchen before. So, ooh, ground fry. Wipe that off be our little secret. Now we tuck the fries away and hope they don't go too brown on us. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna fry the french fries twice. Once on a lower heat and then once again to crisp them up. Right. Got this thing dug into the ground, this little stove here, because as you can see, there's a huge opportunity for things to go badly here. But, uh, just get started stealthily uh, doing the first fry on these french fries. It should do.
cooked them about five minutes on what I'm guessing is a lower temperature. It's uh, definitely not full blast. Beer batter requires beer. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. Some of them. Plastic cork in there. Not a moment too soon because we're losing our daylight. However, this is what I whipped up here. Uh, I don't think the batter is quite hot enough for the fish, but uh, the fries worked out just great. Mm. Now that whole forest smells like a food truck. Good thing there's no bears in this area. There's uh, too many farms around. They don't make it too far into the prairies. You may have noticed I didn't make a uh, tartar sauce because I just, uh, I think that's the seafood version of ketchup and it's not how I want to eat things. It's going to be quite good. It's cooling off a little bit, but tonight is not supposed to be too cold. So I feel quite comfortable with what I brought for the sleeping bag. And uh, I'm going to hit the hay in a little bit, but it's still quite nice out. Um, enjoying the sounds of nature. And uh, still got some juice left in the thermosel. Haven't seen a mosquito in a while. So I'm just going to enjoy the evening and the silence, other than the occasional road noise. But uh, I do have to give a shout out to all the folks that have donated to the beer donation funds. And I know we missed a video last week, um, sadly. Okay, good, good, good. We did miss a video last week and I know there were birthday shout outs. So you guys, you may end up a week late here. I'm sorry if... Uh, if that's the case but uh, uh, cheers to all and we're of course in this constant battle to try and film a few more to get ahead of the game <laughs> and things don't always go to plan I guess on a one-man produced unscripted weekly uh, <laughs> YouTube show so uh, cheers to everybody Good morning. Well, it was a little chilly, but not bad. I've been a lot colder than that before. And uh, it's um, another beautiful day out here. There is uh, that quad putting away. I can hear it festering over there. And um, that raises a concern. Is that, uh, is that somebody out uh, playfully enjoying a recreational day of quadding or is that somebody that's actually patrolling this uh, for the conservation department? Uh, it could be an interesting situation. So, I think it's uh, time-wise, maybe about eight some odd in the morning. Oh yeah, actually it's almost nine o'clock. So, I'm gonna try and set the land speed record to pack this thing up, and we'll. Um, Ride the bicycle into town. Ah. 
just like that. And uh, yeah, as with any other crime, make sure you don't leave any evidence behind. Final sweep of the area. And I think it's all good. That pretty much does it. Just about to peel out of here. Um, I don't normally make a breakfast and today is no exception because I'm usually trying to get it a dodge. Um, I don't want to be frying bacon uh, when I made it through the whole night and then suddenly a little park ranger comes around and you weren't here all night, were you? Of course I'd try to act like I wasn't, but it's going to be obvious, right? So uh, yeah, speaking of that, uh, if you do want to see me get caught, um, please subscribe and that way you'll be one of the first to know when, when it goes down. And uh, I guess also, you know, we never had the good breakfast cereals growing up, so I don't have a strong association with uh, breakfast being good. Usually wheat puffs or something, or Sunny Boy cereal. And uh, sleepovers was a treat, because my friends were always having Fruit Loops, uh, and their parents would let them put sugar on the Fruit Loops. They were using chocolate milk, of all things. And, you know, I'm surprised we were one level away from having to use tap water on puffed wheat. So, to see these kids using chocolate milk in their cereal was, like, mind-blowing for me. Um, it may be a little bit bitter and resentful. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah, uh, no breakfast today, long story short. So, let's get out of here, because the crime has been committed, and now we're just asking for it, uh, lingering at the scene of the crime. All right, perfect. Back onto the road, and uh, yeah, we should be good from here. Awesome. Nice thing is this is downhill all the way back, um, unlike yesterday, which was uphill the whole way. That was much easier on the way back, uh, all downhill. So, I'm gonna get home. Uh, thank you guys for uh, watching this, and we'll see you next week. Cheers.